Hello coders, today we're going to be talking about the structure of my CV. Now recently I've been speaking to all sorts of people on the podcast, including some hiring managers such as Jeremy Onion, who have been giving me some really good advice on how to structure a web developer's CV. So I've decided to write my CV and publish that onto GitHub. And we're going to go through the structure of the CV in this video. I'm also going to be talking about why I've decided to put it on GitHub and the benefits of doing so later on in this video as well. So the CV is on GitHub. My profile is PFWD. The repository is cv.git and we can see that here. So if I scroll down, what I'm going to do is talk about each individual section and how that is structured. I'm not actually going to be talking about the contents of the CV in this video. That's something I'm going to be covering later in a future video on this channel. So the first thing we've got here is the title. So this is kind of like a, a little strap line, if you will. So CV of Peter Fisher and then some credentials. After that, we have kind of like a little sort of synopsis, a little bio, but I've kept it nice and short and sweet. Only a single sentence to keep it on one line. So it's kind of like my strap line, my headline, if you will, uh, about who I am as a developer. After that, we have future objectives. In fact, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go through each section. So we have future objectives. We've got skills and assets. We've got work history. Then after the work history, we have education. After the education, we have publications. After that, we have hobbies and interests. And then we have contact. Now, the order in which I've done this is extremely important. If I scroll right to the top here, like so. The first thing is future objectives. So these are things that I wish to achieve myself in the future going forward. Then we have the skills and assets. So these are the skills and assets that I can currently bring to the table. After that, we have the work history. Now the work history is usually the chunkiest part of a CV because the longer you've been in this industry, the more work history than, that you can actually put in to this section. And therefore it can become quite difficult as to what to include and what not to include and how detailed and granular you become. So it's important to keep this work history section in a particular order. So the order is what I'm currently working on now, the latest thing I've done, all the way to the first thing that I've ever did in this industry. So from 2016 to present, and then all the way down, in my case, to 2007 to 2008. After that, we have the education. Now, this is obviously going to be extremely different from everyone. And uh, junior developers or developers coming into this industry won't necessarily have all of the, the work history available because they haven't done that work history. Do check out the podcast I did with Jeremy Onion to talk about how to create a CV when you are trying to get into the industry because he has some fantastic tips in that case. But for me, what I've done is I've just created a very basic table where we have dates on the left hand side and then the course and institute on the right hand side. Um, this means that I can keep this nice and light. It's very headliney. It says exactly what I've done and where I did it and when I did it. I'm not kind of waffling on as to the stuff I was learning in that sort of institute in that course. However, if I was a junior developer, I would be padding this out, adding more about what I did in my classes, in my lectures, the kind of projects that I had done and so on and so forth. Do check out that Jeremy Onion podcast because it is full of golden advice. Okay. After this, we have publications. Now this is um, not going to be the same for everyone. Not everyone has publications. Uh, however, you can think of publications in a very broad, abstract way, I, in my opinion. So if you if you've done any uh, blog posts, um, then you could put those down. If you've done any talks, then you could put those down like I've done. I've, I've added that my three talks that I've, like, that I've given at PHP Southwest. Um, then of course I've added some, uh, details about the courses that I've, uh, ran for Manning publications, uh, and packed publications. 
I've also mentioned lightly about the podcast and the uh, the YouTube channel. Then after this, we get off of the technical stuff and we talk about hobbies and interests. Um, again, I've kept this nice and light. Um, this is just stuff that will bring sort of a conversation to the table, perhaps if when I do have an interview uh, where they can talk about, you know, what kind of running style do you do? What kind of cycling do, do you do? That kind of stuff. Um, where do you speak? at user groups. And then finally, to round this all off, we have the contact. Now, the contact stuff is just links off to various social media platforms, as well as my blog. So we have LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, and the web. Okay, so that's the structure. And I'm certainly not saying that this is the right way, the only way to do this it's going to be very personal to you. Let's talk about why I've put my CV on GitHub and the benefits of doing so. There's a couple of reasons, really. First of all, there is zero barrier of entry for me because GitHub is a tool that I use every day. I have my own profile set up on GitHub. There is zero barrier of entry. There's no setup required. GitHub renders readme files in Markdown like I've just displayed. And therefore, I have an editor, my IDE, PHP Storm, that I used to write my CV that I use every day. You know, every day of my coding life, I've opened up a code editor of some description and I've been able to write Markdown. So I already have the tools. I can do this. I don't have to install Word. I don't have to install any other sort of Word-esque Linux type thing or pages. Also, the second reason is uh, centralization. So I was asked uh, recently for a CV by various people and at the time that I was asked, I was using various different machines. And therefore, I have various different copies of my CV on those various different machines. And it's very difficult to update um, and keep it nice and central. And therefore, with GitHub, I can just clone this repository, make a change, and then push that to this repo. Also, this is all public knowledge. Everybody knows this stuff if they've looked at my LinkedIn profile. So, there's no um, danger of uh, mentioning something that I shouldn't have. This is who I am. This is my development journey on this page. Um, also, the formatting. Using Markdown forces you to make this as basic as possible, right? So there's no fancy sort of borders. There's no fancy images. It is just Markdown code. Now, many recruiters prefer the CV to be as PDFs. So how would I get this Markdown file into a PDF? Well, there are many tools available, some written in Node.js, some written in Python, and so on and so forth, that I can use to convert this Markdown file into a PDF and then send that out. In fact, what I'm thinking of doing is writing a cron job that will pull down this CV and compare the changes to that which is held locally. If there is any changes, it would run a command that creates the PDF and then commits this back up to this repository in perhaps a dist folder. That way, all I need to do is provide the recruiter a link to the PDF and they've automatically got that downloaded. So putting your CV on GitHub is incredibly convenient. And I'm surprised at the few CVs that I actually found when I did search for CVs on GitHub for web developers and programmers. So in the future, I will be talking about my CV in a little bit more detail. I'll be going into the actual content, uh, my work experience, and so on and so forth. So if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the How to Code Well channel. And also do check out the podcast because we've had some very interesting guests on the podcast where they're talking about CVs, they're talking about interviews, they're talking about how to get into the web development industry, and they're also talking about how to improve as a programmer, as a web developer. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.